Hello and welcome to Archvelder's Hacks with Archvelder and his amazing hacks. In my recent leveling guide there was quite a lot of stuff I edited out for various reasons. Now there were some tricks that were just too hardcore to go public, like this method I'm demonstrating here where you can one-shot every mob in a dungeon using a party sync trick and get full XP even in the 110 to 120 bracket. I'm going up 30% of a level from 118 to 119 in a few seconds here. You might be able to figure out what I'm doing just from watching this clip, but I'm not going to spell it out publicly as it would get hotfixed. This type of content is the sort of thing I normally put on my Patreon for that reason. By contrast, there was a lot of stuff that just wasn't good enough to make it in, and I had to ruthlessly edit out. I do have quite high standards for that type of video. That said, some of the plays I edited out were quite strong and or fascinating for other reasons, so I thought I'd make a separate video outlining their strengths and weaknesses. This is more of a niche video, but there might well be something here that you personally can use. Most of these plays are not interesting to everybody, but they may be very interesting to somebody. Now, first up, there's a very strange place here in Zuldrak in Northrend. There's these Rage Claw mobs, they're friendly to the player, and they fight an endless battle with the Drakari Trolls. Now, look what happens when I use a Fire Blast on this troll before any of the Rage Claw mobs engage. I'm then going to drop combat and let the Rage Claw finish off the troll. I'm getting full experience for the kill, even though the Rage Claw mobs did most of the damage. Provided you tap the mob with a damage attack, you can let the Rage Claw do all the work. And combined with the troll's instant respawn, this makes for quite an effective experience farm in the 60 to 80 bracket. The only reason I didn't include this one was that I felt it was more enjoyable to use party sync methods to explore areas of old Azeroth I wouldn't normally level through. Worth mentioning you also get some rare and valuable transmog drops if you do this farm long enough. Now in the Ashara quest chain there's this bizarre little quest called Nine's Plan where you ring this doorbell and out comes this weird mutant goblin monster thing with tendrils. You can ring the buzzer as many times as you'd like, and the mob will keep appearing. Now, on the face of it, this seems like a really good instant respawn farm, as the mob awards full experience. However, two tendrils spawn also, which are time-consuming to kill and don't award experience. Now, the obvious solution would be to drop combat in some way, but there's no really time-efficient way to do that I could discover with the exception of Hunter's Fame Death. Hunters might want to try this. The following trick is just a simple method to buff your own characters. All you do is Alt plus F4 on the character you want to level and the character will stay in game motionless for a minute. You then log in on a high level character and buff your leveling character. The damage and survivability boosts you get from doing this are significant but in the past, viewers have shown a hostility and disinterest in disconnect-based methods, unless the gains were absolutely spectacular, so I just cut this out. That said, potentially you can get full raid buffs on your levelling character, and obviously that does make a significant difference to your levelling speed. The next trick is mage only, which is why I didn't include it in the guide, but it is a pretty cool trick. Go to this area in Netherstorm in Manaforge Banar, that's in Outland, and spell steal the Fiery Intellect buff from a mob called the Sunfury Astronancer. There's four of them in the area. They're scattered around the Manaforge. Now this buff is bugged and does way more damage than intended and allows you to make very short work of all the mobs in the area. It's a great grinding opportunity. If you are leveling a mage, this is a wonderful alternative to the 70 to 80 quest grind. In fact, you can do this right up to level 120 with a party sync partner in the 60 to 80 bracket. There's a similar opportunity here in Valkyrion in the Storm Peaks. This is in Northrend. You can spell steal this buff Metanoia from these Valkyr Aspirant mobs. Note the shadowy appearance it gives you. Now, unlike the Netherstorm buff, 
Metanoia can be stacked indefinitely and allows you to one-shot mobs. That said, I have a slight preference for the Netherstorm Fiery Intellect buff. And that's because the mobs are simply more accessible in Netherstorm. Here in Dustwallow Marsh, there's an item which is provided for the quest Corrosion Prevention. This item allows you to one-shot mobs and gain full experience, provided you use the tagging trick I showed earlier. Just attack the mobs in question with any kind of damage attack, and then use the quest item. The reason I didn't include this one is that the item in question has a 6 second channeling time, and a player in full looms and enchants can actually kill mobs slightly faster than that on average even taking into consideration the fact that the quest item can be used at range. That said, for players without hairy looms, this isn't a bad option. Corrosion Prevention is available at level 35. The following similar quest is available at the other end of the leveling spectrum, in Nazmir. It's about halfway down the Nazmir quest chain. The relevant quest here is called Poisoning the Brood. And the exploit here is exactly the same as before. Tag the tamed Warspawn bats with a damage attack, use the quest item, and they explode, giving you full experience. This is visually spectacular and a lot of fun to do, but it's not really viable as an optimised form of levelling. The following method isn't a levelling method as such. It is a way to earn currency for the draft of the Ten Lands Elixir, which gives you a 10% XP and power boost when levelling. You buy these with medals you can earn from doing war fronts. Now, what most people do is enter a war front and then auto run into a tree or something because they don't want to do the war front. That's not actually the right way to do it. What you should do is this. Just enter the war front and then log out, and then go and do something else for around 20 minutes, no more no less. Re-enter the warfront, and it should be basically over. I didn't include this one because while I personally don't have any issues with exploiting holes in the code of a billion dollar operation like Blizzard, it is a bit different when you are getting other players to do all the work for you. Now there's another Ashara Horde quest available from level 10 and this one's called Waste of Time and this is a way down the Ashara quest chain. And I really like this one because it's got a completely unique and exploitable mechanic. In this quest you're supposed to pick up these herbs but if you don't actually loot the herbs but keep going through the motions you'll find you get a buff which increases your damage up to a hundred percent. The debuff lasts a full minute and can be refreshed by spamming opening of any of the time herbs. Now a hundred percent damage buff obviously makes it very easy to kill any of the mobs in the area, but unfortunately the mobs in the area are all scattered and none of them respawn particularly fast, which is essential with this type of exploit. You need something where you've got an overpowered damage buff from some source or other, but you've also got some instantly respawning mobs. What I didn't realise when I made the levelling guide was that this mob here, this stone giant Balboa, actually has a fairly fast respawn timer of 30 seconds, and one of the items you can get dropping from him is quite valuable. There's another fun quest for low-level Horde players here in Stone Talon Mountains. This quest is called To Battle Scar. It's about halfway down the Stone Talon Mountains quest chain, which is quite fast. In this quest, you get to pilot a tank, which kills everything in the vicinity. Now, you don't get XP for killing things in the tank. However, if you've got a partner and they tag something, they will get full XP for anything you subsequently kill. Again, you have to get your partner to tag any mob with some kind of damage attack first. Fun as this is, there are much better ways to use the synergy between two players effectively. Finally, in the leveling guide, I mentioned a quest called Combat Training, where you could glitch for farmers out of the intended zone and anywhere in the western or eastern plague lands to fight for you. 
this was a horde quest. What I did mention is that you can also get the Valkyr, which enslaves the farmers in the first place, to come with you, and indeed, she will follow you through any port. So, unlike virtually every other quest pet that you can glitch out of their intended zone, you can take her into instances. All you have to do is hearth or teleport out of the intended area while she's active. Now, you'd think this would be really useful, but the problem is... She's just very, very weak. She can barely kill a mob of her own level. And in practice, it's just not worth it. Though I have to say she'd be amazing for roleplay purposes. Now, this is the part of the video where I normally ask for people to subscribe or join my Patreon. But I'm not going to do that this time. Instead, I'm going to ask if you can afford it, and only if you can afford it, to make a small donation to whatever local organisation will take donations for personal protective equipment for your local doctors, nurses and other medical support personnel. Thanks for watching, this has been Archfather.